<sighs> all right muchachos so today's video i'm going to be revealing all of my secrets and we're going to do our very first q a on this channel if you guys remember a few videos ago i asked you guys for some questions and you guys delivered i want to appreciate every single one of you to ask the question because we have almost 100 of them but obviously I'm not going to be able to answer every single one, but I'm going to try my best to answer as many as possible. If during this Q&A you have any questions, also leave them in the comment section below. And I'm also going to timestamp all the questions I answer in this Q&A. That way you guys can kind of like sort through and just, you know, skip to the ones that you like. But anyways, in this video, my man Cyrus. What's up, guys? Yeah, he's going to be asking all the questions. You see, peeps, that's the homie over there holding the fort down. What it do? So now we're ready for the Q&A, but before we begin, we have to swear in. Which hand goes on which? Left uh, hand, right hand? The right hand goes on the okay, Bible. Okay. okay. Tal physique. Do you swear that the evidence that you shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes. Do you, Tal physique, swear to uphold the highest laws of fitness YouTube? So help you God. Yes. Do you, Tal physique, plan to clickbait in order to gain YouTube views? So help you God. Yes! Hell yeah! All right, you may now begin. <laughs> All right, let's begin. What do you do for a living? So for a living, I'm a personal trainer. I do both online and in-person personal training. Lower belly fat, not leaving. Even though I lost a lot of weight, I fear if I lost more weight, I won't have the body type look I'm going for, which is lean muscle. What would you suggest a person going through this do? What? <laughs> I, I think the person is asking, how do you lose belly fat without losing muscle? Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, so guys, how you lose belly fat without losing muscle is pretty simple, man. You just need to focus on your nutrition and on your training. So on the nutrition side, you wanna make sure that you're in a caloric deficit, that you're getting in enough protein, about one gram per pound of lean body mass. And training-wise, you wanna make sure that you're hitting every single muscle group at least twice a week, and you're training at the correct intensity. It's pretty simple, guys. It's all about nutrition and training. I don't lose weight when I'm at 1,900 calories. I don't lose weight at 1,500 calories. I only lose when I go down to 1,200 calories. But I also read not to go under 2,000. WTF, I'm 5'11", 185 pounds. What am, am I doing something wrong? Should I go higher or stay at 1,200 until I lose what I want? If you're eating 1200 calories and you're not losing weight, that might mean that you're actually counting your calories incorrectly. So when you're tracking your calories, you always want to make sure that you're being as accurate as possible using uh, the weighted scale, using cups, measuring everything as detailed as possible, right? But if you are doing that and you still need to go so low to lose weight, then you kind of have to just accept it for what it is, man. That's like, you have to do whatever it takes to lose the weight at the correct rate. And if you don't want to eat less, you can always just increase your activity by increasing, oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it's cardio, even though I hate cardio. What's better to lose weight fast? A juice fast or a water fast? Oh, so this guy wants to know how to lose weight fast, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, no, dudes, look, guys. In my opinion, that mentality, you don't want to be thinking of getting anything fast because in my opinion, anything you get fast, you lose fast. And I'm sure you want to lose the weight to improve your lifestyle. So you might need to make a little bit of a mental switch and instead of trying to find a magic bullet, you need to put in the work, dudes. Like seriously, like there's no shortcuts to anything. So I would definitely not recommend the juice or water fast to anybody. What is your opinion on no fab or PMO? No fab? Oh, all right guys, so you know what? I made a video about NoFap actually a while ago and I have to keep it real with y'all, man. I relapse all the time, dudes. And I mean like all the time. Ron, why did you say that? Why? Why, Ron? You're my hero, Ron. Garth, I... You come out with... Think like that, poop, you poop mouth. Don't get me wrong, right? I do believe that no fab is good for certain individuals, especially people that are addicted to porn. Like if you jack off every single day and you jacking off guests in between you going to work, making that money, then you probably need to be doing some no fab, man. You have a problem. 
But honestly, if you can control yourself and you just do it once or twice a week, I really see no problem with fapping. And I don't think you need to go too extreme with the no fap lifestyle. What are your favorite sports teams? Oh, uh, sports? Okay. Um, before I used to love sports guys, but then as I grew older, I, I stopped watching sports to be honest with you. I don't really keep up with them. I have other things that I'm really more focused on. But my favorite sports team before was FC Barcelona. And my favorite player was Lionel Messi. Well, actually, no, I take that back. It was actually Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, I'm a trader. What do you think about the mini bulk, mini cut method to build muscle and minimize fat gain? So for example, you bulk for four weeks and cut for one to two weeks. Brandon Carter and Jeremy Ethier said they personally recommend this method. Oh, so mini cuts, mini bulks. I think they can be good, but you have to be very careful not to spin your wheels. Like. If you're trying to gain muscle, you know you need to be in a caloric surplus. And if you're trying to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. But if you spend equal amount of time on each one, you're probably going to end up being exactly the same. So I like to think about it in terms of a year. If I'm trying to gain muscle, then I want to spend most of my time in the year in a caloric surplus with some cuts here and there to kind of keep body fat in check. And if I'm trying to lose fat an entire year, I want to spend most of my time in a caloric deficit with some bulks here and there just to maintain the muscle, even add on new muscle. You have to think about it in the large scope of things. So yeah, mini cuts and mini bulks can work only if done correctly. Workout split for lagging delts and arms. Okay, this is good for almost any body parts. If you have a lagging body part, you want to work it at least twice per week and you want to aim for about 40 to 70 repetitions per session. Keep it simple, guys. You have to do more often if you're trying to actually build up a muscle group. Is a shake good for breakfast to lose weight? Yeah, of course it is, dude. It's like a shake is good for breakfast. An apple is good for breakfast. Uh, everything is good for breakfast as long as you maintain that caloric deficit. That is the main key for being able to lose weight. How many days a week do you work out and what's your split? I currently work out four times a week and my current split is upper body, full body, upper body, and then full body again. And I do that because I'm doing more calisthenics and gymnastics stuff. So it's very upper body uh, focused. So I really do spend a lot more time working everything up top and not the legs. But yeah, I don't skip leg days guys. I don't skip leg days. Is Dragon Ball one of the reasons you work out? <sighs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a huge fan of Dragon Ball. I'm a huge fan of anime in general, in fact. And one of my favorite characters is Vegeta. You know, and I'm also watching Dragon Ball Super currently, man. And you know what? Before, it kind of started very slow, but now it's starting to get pretty intense. I'm kind of sad that it's about to be over. We only have like maybe like three more episodes left, but yeah, I'm just going to enjoy the rest of it. One of your subscribers wants to know what you know about Kaizen. Oh, Kaizen? Okay, so I'm sure you guys have heard me say this at the end of my videos. I talk about Kaizen, and Kaizen is a Japanese word for change for the better or continuous improvement. Uh, it's actually a philosophy that was used by Toyota to get the company to become one of the biggest companies in Japan. And uh, Kaizen, it kind of goes like this, it's all about trying to improve. And usually when us people we try to improve, we think about making big changes immediately. But Kaizen philosophy goes into, you make small changes and those small changes over time, they lead into big ones. Cause the small changes are a lot easier for us to mentally to implement. So instead of trying to make one big leap, you just make small ones and they end up in time becoming something massive. Kind of like how they say there's no such thing as an overnight success. So Kaizen, always improve. Why I can't stop eating or thinking about food? How do I do it? How do I stop thinking about food? Why can't I stop? Why can't they stop thinking about food? Yeah. Okay. If you're having problems with food and you're having problems with things to your diet, then it's very possible you might actually have a real food addiction. In my opinion, any way to get rid of an addiction is to just switch it out for another one because some people tend to have more addictive personalities and I can relate because I have a huge addictive personality and I do know that when I have nothing going for me, I tend to become more focused on things like food and sex. But when I focus on something else and I become addicted to something uh, that I can put all my energy into, I tend to forget to even take care of my body needs. Like I even tend to forget to eat sometimes. So one thing I'll say is if you're having problems with food, 
pick a hobby, find something that you can get addicted to and try and focus more of your energy into that thing that will give you joy rather than food. How are the handstands coming? Oh, dudes, my handstands are trash, bro. <laughs> my handstands are absolute trash. So you guys know that I started doing this challenge where I'm doing the handstands for 30 days and we're on day number 20 right now, if I recall correctly. And to be honest, I've actually skipped three or four days. So I haven't been 100% on it, but I have seen a little bit of improvement on my handstands. And to be real, I'm gonna keep doing the challenge way past the 30 days because I know that if I'm consistent with it, it's gonna get better. So I try and do handstands for 15 minutes every single day. So yeah, dude, they're coming along, but not as fast as I would like, of course. But you like, you know, like I said earlier, nothing good that's worth anything comes by fast. What is Cyrus' YouTube channel? Oh, Cyrus, hey, show them. What's up, Cyrus? Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, Cyrus's channel is gonna be in the description box below. Check it out, below me. Hi, Tal. What is it like living in Cali? Prices, food, rent, jobs, bills. Never been there, but it looks amazing. Keep up the great work. Oh, dude, Cali is freaking awesome, bro. I can't even lie to you, it is. Oh my God, it is freaking amazing to live here, man. I can't even lie. I'll tell you this, it's so amazing that even all my friends that come visit, they always tend to, you know, to stay. They never go back home. But the real deal though, even though Cali is amazing, you do pay for it. I will say that, you definitely do pay for it. How are Cali girls, bro? Uh huh. <laughs> that is definitely one of the things I like about Cali, bro. The girls here, dudes, choice choice like that's one thing about me i'm a man that likes variety and in california you definitely get that like i can't really say california girls are any single kind of way they're very diverse you have your hipster girls you have your valley girls hey then you also have like you know your uppity chicks then of course it's california you're gonna have your actresses and you're also gonna have your models but they're also known as waitresses if you go out at night with friends, do you still intermittent fast that day? If so, how does this affect your eating window? Well, I mean, for me, I intermittent fast every single day because it is a lifestyle for me. It's kind of like automatic. But um, so yeah, if I go out with friends, it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna do it. But I think that a lot of people kind of get it twisted about intermittent fasting and they focus too much on the eating window or the fasting and they don't focus enough on what to eat when they're actually in the eating window. That's actually what is more important. The food selections you have, that's more important than how long you choose to fast. So instead of thinking about your eating window, maybe focus more on the foods you're actually eating. So yeah, I, I don't really focus too much, or I don't worry too much about fasting while I go out, not really. How to find passion? God damn, what the hell? <laughs> what is this, is this Dr. Phil or something? <laughs> Oprah. Oprah? <laughs> Are we freaking, what's the name of that guy that's like, peace and serenity, that guy on YouTube, what's his name? Oh, Infinite, infinite Waters, waters. Dive they're diving deep. deep. <laughs> Can, I get a, Can I get a hello? 10 secrets marijuana smokers won't tell you. But why, Ralph? I have no idea. They're too busy getting high. We ain't even had breakfast yet. Can I get a hello? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, seriously. Uh, I think that, I guess with social media and everything now, that question does get thrown a lot, that a lot of people feel like they have one thing that they need to be doing in their lives. But in my personal opinion, I feel like as human beings, we have so many things that we are good at. We all have our own unique talents. We have multiple talents, in fact. So really, you don't, find your passion, you kind of make it because there's so many things you're good at and you just have to do something that you're good at, that you like, and you just have to just go gung-ho with that thing and stop trying to find something. Stop waiting for something to come to you. You literally gotta make it happen. So yeah, you don't find your passion. You literally make it happen. Uh, how many pairs of chucks do you own? Oh, I noticed I'll talk about head 14. 14. And, and what is your favorite pair? Ah, oh, dude, that's impossible, man. I can't answer that, dude. Having chucks is like having children, man. It's not right for you to pick a favorite one. But I guess I can just show you guys the ones that I'm wearing right now, because sis, this is my favorite one for today. Right here. Yo, my dude, I'm trying to get a job at a local gym, my first job. Okay. 
And I was wondering if you have any tips or heads up that can help me get and do well at the job. Well, this goes to getting any single job. It doesn't even need to be a gym job. You just have to go in there with the mentality to learn. Like, you have to know that you don't know what you think you know because honestly, personal training is a lot more complicated than people think it is. People just think that you just hang around and sweats all day, chill and count reps. I mean, yeah, I do do that, but there's more to it as well. You know what I mean? So the best way for you to get good at that job is to actually, when you get there, express how much you want to learn and offer to actually shadow the best trainer in there so that it shows that you're willing to learn, that you're willing to progress and just be a sponge, just absorb as much as you can because believe me guys, it's a journey and it's a lot harder than you think. But yeah, good luck with that, man. And let me know how it goes in the comment section. What made you recently become interested in training calisthenics? That's because I was just getting bored, man, with just typical gym bro stuff. Like going to the gym, doing bicycles, tricep extensions, you know, all that stuff. It was cool and all, but I was getting bored. To be real with you guys, I'm pretty happy with the way my body looks. So I'm not so obsessed with improving aesthetics as much as I used to be. And I just wanted a different challenge because I do see the benefits of actually exercising and working out is great for your health. I needed to do something that interests me, that makes me want to actually go to the gym. And currently, calisthenics and gymnastics stuff does that for me because it challenges me and I see a lot more room for growth. And I also realized I only have one body, man. I only have one. So I want to see how far I can push this body while I still have it. So yeah, that's why I do calisthenics. Uh, what kind of wor ab workouts do you do? Or should I work this muscle group three times or more per week? I hate sit-ups probably as much as you hate cardio. I do hate cardio. <laughs> ah, With your abs, dudes, like for me personally, I don't really work my abs directly because I'm blessed genetically. I have a decent set of abs. But if abs are a weak spot for you, you want to actually train abs like a muscle and you want to think about progressive overloading them. So you want to do things like weighted crunches, things that you can actually track over time. And you also want to do them at least twice per week. That's how you can train your abs, guys. But yeah, I don't really train them too often, like I said, because I also do a lot of calisthenic stuff and I also get indirect ab work from that as well. What are the three most important routines that you follow religiously? Three most religious. Three most important routines that you have, that you follow religiously. Wake up, work, sleep. Uh, to be honest, I don't really like routines. Uh, do you have a girlfriend? Uh, okay, so do you guys see all that girly stuff over there, right? Do you think if I didn't have a girlfriend that I'll have all that stuff over there? Yeah, so, yeah, I do have a girlfriend, I do. If you fast- She lives with me, by the way. <laughs> In case you're wondering, she, we live together. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> If you fast for a full day, do you factor more protein into your macros for the next day? Uh, yes, yes you do. So you wanna uh, make sure that your protein actually lines up for the entire week. So think about it for a whole week. So for example, if you usually get in 200 grams of protein, and then you fasted that day, the next day you should get 400 grams, obviously to kind of balance out that 200 you missed. Always think for the entire week. Secrets to get rid of those last kilograms of fat hiding the lower abs. Caloric deficit. I have been fasting for a month and a half and also working out. I think I feel more pain in my muscles and joints now than without intermittent fasting. Do you know of any correlations between intermittent fasting and more intense muscle joints pain? I've lost about 10 pounds, by the way. You lost about 10 pounds in how long? Uh, a month. In one month, yeah. That might mean you're just not eating enough, right? So even though you're doing fasting, you're trying to lose weight, you might be losing it a little bit too fast. You're probably not getting in the correct amount of nutrition. Ooh, excuse me. Wait, that just burped on camera? Oh my God. So bad, so rude. Dude, I just, I just cut off myself. Oh yeah, so yeah, like I said. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're probably just not eating enough and all you need to do is just make sure that uh, you're eating a little bit more, try and get in a lot more protein. Protein will help you with recovery and if you need to supplement, maybe supplement with creatine. But yeah, it just sounds like you're just not eating enough, my dude. How do you differentiate your eating and workout programs of your clients for someone who is very obese versus someone who is just overweight? other than the obvious physical limitations. Ah, that's a good one. 
So obviously they both need to be in a caloric deficit. They both need to have a good amount of protein and they both need to uh, have their training set up correctly. Um, so it's the same thing for everybody, but the truth is if somebody tends to struggle with obesity, that means sometimes it's a mental thing. And instead of just focusing on the very like direct stuff of calories and, and working out, with those kind of clients, I tend to focus more on the mental aspects of things and you're trying to get them to change their behavior because it's their behavior that got them in there in the first place. So it's trying to get them to switch that behavior into seeing exercise and nutrition as a positive thing. And you know, just increasing their self-esteem, confidence, because you know, those kind of clients tend to struggle a lot with that kind of stuff as well. So it doesn't only mean if they're overweight or obese, that just tends to be the case, but yeah, some clients need a lot more mental coaching than others. So usually people that are obese need that. All right, what are your plans for growing your channel? Do you set goals for yourself like 50 followers this week slash month? Where do you want the channel to be one year from now when you're coming up on three years? Mm. Uh, so for me currently, when it comes to growing the channel, I just think about, just put it in the work, man. Now that I'm doing every other day uploads, my main focus is just uploading every other day and then doing content that I am passionate about. And whatever happens is what is going to happen. Like before when I started, I was so obsessed about that stuff, but I realized that man, all that junk is just superficial. What is really more important is me connecting more with you guys. And the more I connect with you guys, the more valuable content I give you guys, the more the channel is going to grow. So I just focus on actually the stuff that I need to do rather than some random number. Cause I can always affect my efforts but I can't really do anything about the results. So I just really focus on what I need to do. That's it. Wait, any more questions? Yep, that's it, man. All right, guys, so that's it. That's the end of the Q&A. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video because it was actually quite a bit of fun to actually connect with you guys some more on a personal level and also help you guys with your problems. So if you reach this point of the Q&A and you have any more questions, drop them in the comment section below so I can do future Q&As because I actually plan on doing them more often on the channel. If you also want to connect with me outside of YouTube, you can also follow me on social media. Instagram is my platform of choice, T-A-O underscore physique. That way I can bombard you guys with shirtless photos. You know what I mean? Show up the games because it's fitness. Duh. And with that, guys, if you guys like this video, go ahead and like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And remember, peeps, always strive to improve, even if it's just a little each and every single day. Kaizen. Catch you guys on the next video the day after next at 7 a.m. PST. Peace.